If you've decided it's time for a new PC, upgrade's not an option, so you can fully enjoy the newly released Microsoft Flight Simulator. You may be looking at the published specifications from Microsoft. Now these can be confusing as they're now out of date. In fact, they were out of date when they were published, with some components no longer being available. Well, if you fall into that category, keep watching because this may be of interest to you. Hello and a warm welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark The Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. Now if you're one of my subscribers you'll know that normally I throw up a green screen here and put a picture or two in the background mainly to hide the chaos of my office. Well today I've got a problem with the green screen. It's not staying up, keeps dropping down halfway through me talking. So I've decided to dispense with it for today but I'll be digging into the toolbox shortly. Okay, with that out the way, let me start off by telling you what this video is not. It's not really aimed at those looking to upgrade a component or two in their PC. Nor is it a list of my personal recommendations for the minimum recommended or ideal specifications. What I've done is I've taken the Microsoft specifications, which are largely out of date, and a number of those components are no longer available for sale, and I've updated them with what's currently on the market and wherever possible with the latest generation, as close to like to like as I could estimate. So in summary, the purpose of this video is to update Microsoft specifications to current hardware and for this to provide a basis for individuals to make an assessment on what upgrade they want to go for. Of course, in the computer world, by and large, if you can afford an i5 as opposed to an i3 processor, well, bigger is always better. 16 gigabyte of RAM isn't as good as 32 gigabyte, but it's better than eight and so on. In the computer world, staying up to date is next to impossible. No sooner have you bought something, then it's obsolete and there's something new on the market. And that's very much the case in terms of graphics cards at the moment. NVIDIA are likely to announce their 30 series graphics cards in the very near future and perhaps as early as the 1st of September. AMD have also got new graphics cards and some new CPUs in the offering. So please bear that in mind. However, the reason I've decided to do this video now is that the current generation of NVIDIA 20 series graphics cards etc are likely to remain in the market for the foreseeable future and likely to be more reachable for those on a tighter budget. With that said, let's have a look. Here are the original specifications issued by Microsoft as a minimum, recommended an ideal spec. Now that Microsoft Flight Simulator has been released, we have a better feel for what sort of horsepower is required in order to run the game at various levels. In terms of performance, we're looking for something between 30 to 60 frames per second. The minimum spec is for 1080p performance. Recommended is for 1440p and ideal spec is the ultra settings for 1440p and 4K. I'm not going to talk through all the specifications, but they're going to come up one by one. We're going to look at it by category. First minimum, then recommended, and then ideal. Well, I trust you found that useful and informative and will be of some help to you. Tell me, are you thinking of replacing your PC or upgrading right now? Or are you going to wait 
for the new Series 30 graphics cards to hit the market from NVIDIA in the very near future. One of the possible benefits is that the 20 Series graphics cards will reduce in price. Let's certainly hope so. The Series 30 graphics cards, well, I'm anticipating them to be fairly pricey. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for joining me. Look forward to seeing you again soon and bye for now. Right now, where's that toolbox and where's that green screen? Let's get this sorted.